Hallelujah. We welcome you again to this Sunday broadcast in the name of Jesus. We thank God because you are able to be in his presence again to worship and to praise him. We know that today God is going to do something spectacular in your life in the name of Jesus. Right where you are, just lift your hands and give your father praise. Give him worship. Give him all the praise and honor. Give him all the praise and honor because he alone deserves it. Say something sweet to him. Let it come from your heart. Say, Lord, I love you. Thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence today. Lord, I give you praise because you are God all by yourself. Thank you, Father, because you are in charge. I give you praise for your loving kindness that never fails, for your mercy that endures forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we exalt you. Now ask God for something that you want him to do for you in this service. Ask him that he will speak to you specially. Ask him that he will impact your life in a way never seen before. Open your mouth and ask your father for something that you want to receive from this service. That it may be dropped into your life by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, speak to him right now where you are seated, where you are watching. Ask father, this is what I need from you in this service. Let your spirit minister to me in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah to your name. Lord, we exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise because in this service, you are going to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. To continue in this service, we'll take this beautiful hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
Shakata. You are Yahweh. Eh, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Our friend in the big The beginning of the end. You are Yahweh. Our friend in the big Can you sing with me? Say you are. You are Yahweh. For Jesus, come on, come on, you can do better. Turn us together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Has God ever been has God ever been faithful to you? Has he been faithful? Come on. Are you ready? Move your body. Come on. Shake, 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 shake the body. Shake, shake, shake the body. Shake, shake. Hey. your name. Faithful God, you are wanted to receive all the praise for you alone. You are my God. You are my King. Jehovah Jireh. Hey, with you, I come off the mountain. With you, there is no impossibility. Whatever you say, will surely come to pass by the mention of your name. Every name of God, yeah, unchangeable God, reliable God, only you can do it. What can I can do? Unchangeable God, reliable God, only you can do. Oh, 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 hey, unchangeable, reliable God, only you can do. What no man can do. Unchangeable. With you, there is no impossibility. Whatever you say, we surely come to pass. At the mention of your name, hey, every name was bow. Hey, hey, unchangeable, reliable. Only you can do. Only you can change. Unchangeable, reliable.
Jesus, I worship you. So, 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 so. Come on. Hey. Come on, Mata. You are so good, 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 good. Darling, Jesus, I worship you. You are so good. Come and say. You are so great. Come on, you are so great. Darling Jesus, I hear your name. You are so great. I can hear you. You are so good. Hey! Darling Jesus, I worship you. You are so great. I will say that one more time. You are so great to you. You are so great to you. Darling Jesus, I worship you. You are so great, so great, so great. You are so good. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. Is there anyone like Him? No one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no, 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 no. He healing every life. 
Kata Aibu Kinyaibu Kishent of the day Kinyaibu You are the greatest one, the Lord God of heavens and the earth. We stand in awe of you. We adore and exalt you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your grace. We appreciate your power. We appreciate your mercy. Lord, we appreciate your blessings over our life. We confess you've been our strength, you've been our refuge. In the midst of the strange fire in the world, you've preserved our lives and we have come to recognize that you are a faithful father. Lord, be lifted up and glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all that you've done for us. We appreciate you for sustaining us to this point. Thank you for your power, your mercies. Your grace. Oh, to you be all the glory, Daddy. In the name of Jesus. We exalt you, Daddy. We appreciate you for the lives that we live in you. Thank you for your hand on our nation. Thank you for your hand on the globe. Thank you for restraining the devil in his plans. We lift you up. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. 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 You welcome again in the precious name of Jesus to our special broadcast from Jesus Center. I pray that as you flow with us today the great and mighty hand of God will be released in your direction to frame, strengthen and build you in the precious name of Jesus don't forget in many of the messages I preached at least in the last two ones I was talking about your need for strength and I was talking about the strength for the journey that is ahead, especially in a perilous time like this. And I tried to settle in on the need for the strength of God beyond your knowledge. 
your exposure and everything now that is becoming relevant for you to have a kind of relationship that can generate a supernatural strength to discern things that are not feasible. And last Sunday, I ministered to you on a message that is tied to making a purpose out of difficult situation. I made you to understand that when difficult things come, they may not come from God. But when God allowed them, they are designed to build us. They are designed to transform our lives and give us special grace to drop things that are not necessary and make some permanent changes for a better move and work with Him that can position us for eternity and great fulfillment on the earth. Now today I'm going to be talking about pursuing God's will. Pursuing God's will. You know, I know you're going through all kinds of webinar teaching you economics. Altars are not economic altar. This is a spiritual altar. So we leave economic teaching to people over there to teach you the techniques of human knowledge and science to live physical life. The altar is designed to give you right spiritual foundation to handle all the physical things people teach you. If you don't have right spiritual foundation to handle your business, your academics, every aspect of your life, your work, you won't actually prosper the way God has ordained you to prosper. And all you pursue in life may end you up here. And then eternity may never be in the picture. And that's why the altar is meant to give you the right spiritual strength to handle your physical life. When we have spiritual, solid spiritual foundation in life, you know, handling the physical, scientific, knowledge-based life becomes smoother and easier. May God give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Now, when I'm talking about God's will, I'm talking to you today about pursuing the will of God. I'm talking about you looking out in life for what God desires for you. Now, anytime you're talking about God's will in life, the most important time when people think about God's will is when you want to marry. I'm not, that's not the context of today's message. You know, we are getting to terrain in the world and in the agenda of God for the globe that you need to take a position on how you want to run your life. If you want to make eternity and you want to fulfill what God has ordained for you here. So, I do know that many are bothered about how to know their marital partner and all that and so that's when people, many people talk about the will of God. No, this is beyond what I'm saying here is a total package of your life. Living in in, in, in tune with what God created you for, what he desires for your life. Actually, many of us don't find life very interesting and great because we are living a conflictual life with God's purpose for us. And when it's like when you spend your life in conflict, you won't enjoy it. We look as if life is so bad. Why am I here? And so this is the issue we're going to be handling today. What actually are the desires of God concerning your life? that we make miracles to happen without struggling. What are the desires of God for your life that we make you to enjoy the fullness, the, His overflowing grace round about your life on daily basis. You know, many times we look for once and for all touch of God that solves certain problems in our lives. But the issue is that as a problem is solving life, another one emerges. That's why Globally living in what God desires for our life is important. Even if I'm going to die in the next one hour, how should I live my life? 
And if I'm going to be lifted to be very great in life, how should I leave it so that I can maximize his purpose, his plans? So this is the issue and it's relevant now. Especially when many people cannot predetermine what is next. So you can then know that if I position myself to live in the will of God, I'm positioning myself for anything coming. Because once God is in the picture and you are in the center of his will, things must work. He must take control for you. Where yeah, you cannot take. He must fight where yeah, you can't fight. Oh, Father, let everyone listening to me today be arrested by your spirit and let there be a flow of light from above. Let there be understanding that's unusual. In the name of Jesus. Pursuing what is God's will? God's will simply is what God desires for your life. What God desires for your life. And uh, why should you pick it? You are sent here by him. You should bother about what he desires for your life because you didn't send yourself here. You didn't choose your parents. You didn't choose your country. You find yourself born by somebody pre-selected divinely. So it's important for you to know that the best for your life is the desire of God. Being the almighty. And in a difficult situation like this, what are God's will for you? What is God's desire? That is our focus today. Now, very simply, let's go into the message. I take the book of Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. In Matthew 11, and I'm going to be reading verse 28. Yeah, when Jesus was physically there, he announced, say, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hmm. Again, I said, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who labor and are every laden, and I will give you rest. Now, if you look at the word you are here, you'll see that we have been raised to labor. <laughs> We have been raised to toil and we all believe in it. That's why you see us teaching ourselves how to work very hard, how to wake up very early, how to sleep very late. We have been raised like that. It's a mentality that dominates teachings and it's good that we be diligent. We labor. But the creator did not originally create you to labor. Hey, I pray that God will give you understanding as I'm ministering to you today in the name of Jesus. He, when he created man, he created man and put him in a garden. The illustration of that spiritual word in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2 it is a very great message that you can explore your life and keep thinking and getting, getting revelation. Labor is a product of sin, disobedience, and rebellious life. And when Jesus came, he actually was given to us. For God so loved the world, Jesus appeared in the world as heavenly intervention to reconnect us to the life we were created to live. <laughs> Lord, as I'm ministering, I'm decreeing every structure in the world that has subjected everyone listening to me today to affliction of labor, may them be broken in the name of Jesus. Say, come unto me, all you labor, and I every lady, and I will give you rest. When he created man, he told man, he said, take care of it. He didn't say labor over it. Take care. He handed over 
the word for us to take care. I didn't say go laboring and toiling. Now, what, what I'm actually saying will not make sense. I know you'll be wrestling with it. How can my, this man say we should not labor? Should we be stealing? Go and steal, they will arrest you. You'll be arrested over time. I'm not teaching you that. I'm telling you the plan of God for your life. I'm telling you the purpose of God. I'm telling you what God desires. So the first desire of God for your life is to have a clear personal relationship with him. Come to me, all you who labor. Come to me. No, what I see that is very pervasive in the world is relationship with church. Without real correct relationship with the God who owns the church. So many times when somebody they are more they glory more in the church they attend. They glory more. Some have great relationship with a pastor, they are lost for the pastor, but they don't have very good personal standing walking relationship with God. The desire of God and the reason why Jesus came to the world to die is to have a walking, I'm not talking a re, about religious relationship, a walking personal relationship with individuals on the earth. And that is, that, that is a relationship that comes from personal knowledge of God, personal revelation knowledge of God and that provoke you accepting God personally, not accepting church. Church is a good place to build your knowledge of God, to relate, to fellowship. And God encourage it. But the relationship that makes things work is your relationship. You know now church is not even operating. I'm preaching from the altar of the church. You know? But there is, I'm, I'm preaching to you out there. Before, people must see before I preach. But now I'm preaching to you knowing you are there. Now, if you don't have good relations with God in a time like this, you'll be in a mess. So, the first desire of God is for your relationship with Him to be personal, to be real. And you yourself will know I have a Father, I have a Redeemer, I have a Master who rules your life personally. He then, you know, that relationship helps you when you join a church. Because you know who you are looking for in the church. It helps you to serve with a better perception of the things you do when you serve in the church. It helps you to know why you give anything to support the work of God. It helps you to be delivered from show that people do when they say they claim to serve God. May the Lord give you understanding. So we are, the way I'm starting today is that God decided that you be saved and come into a personal working relation. I'm trying to describe it. I know when you ask people today, are you saved? Everybody is saved. But you still see them saved in an unsaved steps. You see so many saved living a wrecked life then the kind of salvation that we know in our generation present to people a salvation that does not make any difference in life for people that have it. So, in a perilous time when Signa tells us that everything will soon be over, now that we are closer home than when we started the journey, it is time to revisit your relation. The first, most important desire of God for you is that you have a personal relationship with God. And that relationship must be alive. It must be working. It must influence how you see life, how you do things. A relationship that drives you to walk in Him. May God give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Now, this kind of relationship gives rest of mind. It gives peace. It gives you special joy that is unspeakable, that is not based on the wealth you have in your bank account. Because it gives you security in the fact that whenever he comes, you are ready to go with him. 
it strengthens you within that whatever happens in the world because you are in his company you are really connected you are secure because it's only something that can overthrow break God that can break you so God is calling you I'm going from that simple verse that you know come unto Jesus really the useless life that does not carry any testimony that you live it's not the life you are redeemed to live until a man comes into real relationship with God Christianity does not make correct sense does not impart any value you just run religious life and that's why many times multitude pray they can't find answer because they, the person they are praying to they don't know him he doesn't know them because there is no standing covenant established working relationship that could create real flow of praying together I am sent to build you not to make you a dependent I'm, I'm sent by God to establish you on Christ the solid rock so that you can stand on your own and confront life with God and win. Many of the reasons why the devil takes so much glory in our generation, we see him visibly at work everywhere, is because men who claim to know God don't really know him. Men who claim to be working with God are not working with him. Men who claim to be saved are not really saved. They are saved by letter. I confess Jesus. As the scripture has said, so saved by letter. But there is no spiritual connection that establishes that letter step. Receive understanding in the name of Jesus. So God has sent me to you today that the first most important thing for you is relationship with God that is working and actually you know when God becomes the center of your life your relationship you know when you have good relation with somebody they carry special weight in your steps and decision so when you can give up things that are godly and do anything to steal money to manipulate to, to commit fraud engage in corruption it shows you don't know the Lord these are principal tests you don't get transformed and redeemed by your work but when a man is redeemed you know you have been redeemed you have actually you have established a relationship with God when there is sensitivity to things that are not of God but when you came you are saved I'm saved by grace and anything can go in your life anywhere at any time then there is a question on that relationship because nobody can relate with God without God leaving certain impact, certain grace upon them. And in a time like this, reflect. Do you have a working? Your relationship with God begins to work when it influences how you handle life, how you handle your work, how you handle your spouse, how you handle your relationship, how you handle your children. And you handle God himself. That is when relationship with God begins to work. I think this is just the way I can, I can illustrate it. Now let's then compare this scripture with Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 verse 36. Now in Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 you see God seeking to be a shepherd for you. The Bible says when he saw multitude, it's like God is looking at the whole world. Seven billion people. The Bible said God is moved with compassion for every one of us on the head. Moved with compassion. Why? Because they were weary and scattered and were like sheep having no shepherd. Now when we don't have working relationship with God, we are working without a shepherd. So he has a compassion because he has a desire to be your shepherd. He wants you under him. So that as a shepherd leads, feeds, guides, he ships. He wants to take that kind of care of your life. May God give you understanding. There is, his hand is stretched again. And I've been sent to tell you, come and reposition your relationship. I keep touching on this because it 
matters and it is the foundation of flow of grace of God and his power on a life. The will of God is that you be saved. That's the number one. The will of God is that you have a working relationship with him. It's his greater desire. When you are not in a relationship with God, you have not started anything. Working one, not religious one. And number two is that when you come into a relationship with God, he wants you to actually get lost in that relationship to become like himself. Let's check the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 29. Romans 8 and verse number 29. The Bible says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Now this Bible is simply saying that when you forge a relationship with God, and you are elected you are redeemed you are picked up the ultimate plan of God is that you walk and get lost inside God to the point that you become like him you carry his image and this is very very important because when you were created the Bible told us in creation you were created in the likeness of God in the image of God we lost that in rebellion and so the coming of Jesus when you are initiated into a relation with God is to make you grow in the Lord grow in the knowledge of God grow in your love for God to the point that when we meet you we meet God himself that's the best way to picture what I'm talking about so in the beginning of our lives at creation we were actually fashioned to be like the almighty God to be like Jesus the redeemer of our soul being like him is not in complexion but the beauty of his nature we are created in his image in his likeness to resemble God in our step characteristics our utterances the things in our doings in our in our actions we were created to be a, a true reflection of our maker that was his desire let us make man in our image after our likeness oh may you share this vision in the name of jesus you know, we see so many redeemed, so many born again by grace who have capacity to fight well and they are still fighting. After 20 years of redemption, after five years of knowing the Lord, so many who have capacity to use people selfishly for their own, to achieve their goal without the, the understanding of God's plan for those lives. So many of us just live chaotic life that contradicts what our creator created us to be. Now, God is calling you back. There is a goal in the heart of God when you are created. The goal is that you become like him. You be like him. So, by the principle of creation, the desire of God. And so, if you want to live for the will of God, now you should wake up every day Panting and longing to be like your maker. Panting and longing to be a true reflection of his image, his nature, his love to people around you. That is what you are redeemed to become. And that is his desire. That's what I'm telling you. This I'm talking about is not about how to choose this, how to choose that. Now, when you walk in all this, all your struggle to know to marry will be resolved automatically. Because when you walk in these realms, you walk in the realm where things begin to get sorted out without struggle. We are in struggle and labor because we are not pursuing the things that matter. The things that can position us to get the best from God and to get the best of him on the earth. 
Now let's first, let's imagine it. If all of us are seeking to be like God, then you won't see anybody fighting again. You won't see anybody babiting again. You can imagine how great the world will be. How glorious the church will look like. How pervaded with God's glory. How heavenly things will look. But we don't have the vision. We are appealing to pity and grace every day. And like I have told you many times in my messages, let me tell you today, grace is given for you to enter. You cannot enter and die at the gate of purpose. When a person is redeemed and is not growing, is not maturing, he wants to die at the gate. It's like they give you a visa. And you can't use the visa for the purpose for which you got it. Grace gives you opportunity to have access to God, become his child. But when you become his child, what do you make of it? That is where we are now. Uh, but many of us stay at the gate of redemption and we want to start there and die there. You'll be sorry for yourself if you meet God that way. Because actually, many may have to cry the day Jesus appeared because of so many plans of God that are never fulfilled because of distractions of worldly vanities that we have we, that have distracted us from carrying in on things that matter to God. Now when a man is building and pursuing a goal of being like the Lord, when you are approaching your business, you are pursuing money, you are pursuing an exam, you, nobody will be, you won't have so much struggle staying stable. You won't have problem. But when you don't have this goal, you pursue life like anybody. And that's why there is no distinction between us and anybody on the earth today. Christianity has become just a fashion. Relationship with God does not leave any discernible mark of people who claim to have it. In our offices, anything they throw, we all jump at it together with unbelievers. Nobody can see somebody who is pursuing life who is looking at the nation from the perspective of his God. What will Jesus do with Nigeria? How should I approach it? We are all being promoted by God and positioned and then we are vandalizing like anybody else with big, big Bibles on our hand. But yet, no difference that reflect the God of the Bible that we carry. You are redeemed to become like Jesus on the streets of your country. You are redeemed to be like Jesus in your workplace. That men will see your light, see God right on the seat at your table. And they say, yay, this is God. When they saw this, they say, we perceive these people have been with Christ. They were a reflection, a manifestation of the image of Jesus to their generation. This is the truth. No grace will bear you from this truth. And may God give you grace to, him, to accept the vision for your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So we are seeking to see Jesus on the streets. When we meet you. If you are actually maturing and you have aspiration and you are growing in him. May you gain understanding in Jesus. So to be able to attain this, you have to deal with that selfish, selfish life. You have to deal with that strength, desire for wealth. People are teaching you how to gather wealth. The Bible says, anybody that wants to be rich will fall into divers of temptation. <laughs> That's the Bible. That's the Bible. It's good. God blesses. That's why the Bible says, you know, the, the blessings of the Lord make rich. And if you is your desire to be rich, you are in problem already. That's the Bible. Except there is somebody who can give a teaching that can fault the scriptures. So you must understand that you must deal with selfishness. You must deal with strange desires. Your desire should be to love the Lord more. To grow in Him. And to do things based on the principles of the scriptures. That's when you are seeking to be like God. This is the truth that our generation don't want to read. Our goal is now about money and money and money and money. But let me tell you, you will never be satisfied with it. 
you won't be except you are first satisfied with the giver of that money may the Lord give you understanding you will find yourself committing fraud in corruption carried away by any wind if money and riches is your goal seek to be rich towards God seek for the kingdom and let his great hand bring blessing to you may the Lord give you understanding I'm not telling you not to work but I'm telling you all these sharp sharp practices that many of us who call ourselves children of God are engaging in won't get you to heaven you will be questioned because they are not based on biblical principles they are not godly they are not godly once money making is your goal you are going to have problem please the Lord and scrutinize your step and pursuit of things in the world in the context of the biblical principle on which you are redeemed may God give you wisdom in the name of Jesus why am I saying you should decide to be like him the Bible gave us an illustration of a man in the Bible his name is Enoch in the book of Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 the Bible said this man walked with God and was not you know he, he was he was Trans, getting transformed day by day daily transformation in his nature in his love in his life to the point that he become so beautiful God carried him away he didn't see that so if you are sparring for great eternity actually the way is love God more now begin to deepen your knowledge of him time is far spent and listen to me you cannot seek to be want to become like God in a walking good relationship with God and beg for bread on the earth. <laughs> I pray you have understanding. Many of us are, you know, when you see the life of some people, you cry. Because the holiness you carry is, is religious holiness, is letter holiness. It's not walking spiritual, living, Holy Ghost frame relationship. And so, it positions you in the context of your rule and regulations. And so, you see wrecked life. You see vanished life. You see people begging for bread, claiming to walk with God. I'm not saying that everybody that walk with God must necessarily be blessed, but there is a way God meets the need of his own who walk in this. Jesus never begged for bread. He never begged. Rather, he was blessing people with things that money can't buy and with things that money can buy. That's the God who saved you. And I can tell you this, when a man walk in, the, in spirit and in truth with God, rather than in structures of doctrines that are not walking on the Holy Ghost orbit. You see the abundance of his grace and blessings. May the Lord give you understanding. Enoch walked with God and God took him away. He was beautiful for God. He carried him away. You know God he, 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 he said he has compassion. Every time he looks, he looks at us wants to carry us. But we are not carryable in the shape we are. We are not carryable. Repackage your life. Pursue his will for your life. And all the things you are chasing we, we begin to chase you, seek you. You will have peace. Come unto me all ye that labor and I will give you rest. You will have rest. May you receive grace to take the rest that God has for you in the name of Jesus. Let me leave that because time is fast. But number three, which I want to talk about today, which the will of God is that you walk in faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and 7. We walk by faith and not by by sight. People are making a ridicule of faith, but let me tell you, faith is absolute trust 
in God. And when you don't absolutely trust God, you will fail. Because you will drop from the spiritual level to the natural level of knowledge and be left with human strength alone. It is the will of God. Why? Because Hebrew 11 says, made us to understand that you can't please God without faith. You can't please God. One of the most great desires is to see faith. When it's where God sees faith, you see God appearing. You see him make his glory known. Manifesting himself. Anywhere he sees real faith. Raw faith. You see God in action. And anything that takes your faith takes God from your hand. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Why is faith important? God has final say on every matter. <laughs> if any report is given to you by the world, God has final say on it, on health, on economy, on anything. He has the final say. And because he is God who can do all things, there is no way of faith, true faith in God can fail. So, one of the will of God for you is that you walk in faith. Don't subject yourself to stress. Don't die of labor, toiling. Bring faith into the picture in everything you are doing. There is no end of struggle in knowledge. But there is rest and peace in faith. When you have somebody to lean on, may the Lord give you wisdom. Number four is that it is the will of God for you to forgive others freely. You know, many of us are living in pain. Even your marital relationship, you are not enjoying it because there is a strength in you to carry grudge, to hate, to fight and never forget. And yet you are born again. <laughs> but Matthew 5, 8 tells you forgive so that your father can forgive your sins too. And forgiveness must be freely. Forgiveness must be free. Your heart must be pure. For your heart to be pure, you have to uproot all the people you have planted in certain corner of hatred, of unforgiveness, of wickedness. There are some you are waiting for the day they will just drop and die. And yet you are born again. The will of God is to drop those people you have kept in certain corner of your life who you are waiting for vengeance over. A great Christ-like life is a life of grace towards others where you can overlook things and let it go in the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. You know, said, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. With all malice. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. The will of God. That's the will of God. That you be tender hearted, not strong hearted, not stiff naked. God wants you to be tender hearted and simple, ready to give things up, ready to forget things that does not promote blessings and, and victory. God has sent me to you so that you can have rest, so that you can enjoy peace. There is somebody locked up in your heart. Can you release the person? What he has done to you is so bad. God knows. Release him. You don't need any condition. Oh, except this happened, I will not forget. If you can't forget, then you are bl blocking the gate of heaven against yourself. You are actually closing the heaven to the great thing God wants to still do with your life. Yeah. 
And so you may pray and never find his answer to certain critical things. You may be looking for him to show up in certain area of your life and he may never be there for you. Forgive others freely. Unconditional forgiveness is God's will. And sometimes you go to people, this is the culture of God. When they are settling for you, God provide people can talk to you. Say, oh, except this happen, that happen, it can happen. Go ahead, you have become God. And then you won't have peace. Every time you are holding to somebody in unforgiveness, your peace is affected. Your joy is affected. And your prayer life is under a bandage. And of course you know, move of God in your life is also hindered. May the Lord give you understanding. Pursuing the will of God. Come and learn to live a daily life of forgiveness. Men will offend you on daily basis at work. Your spouse, your children. But God is calling you to a life of free forgiveness so that you can enjoy peace. You can enjoy the grace and mercy of God without struggling. You can have your prayers answered by God. May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus. So release your boss. Forgive him or her. Release your spouse. Forgive him. That's what God is telling you today. Or her. And let the name of the Lord be glorified in your life. Let the peace of God come in. And let give God the room to do what he wants to do. So that testimony can begin to flow in your home. In the life of your children. They can become very happy. And then you, you know, you have subjected your children to strain by the way you relate with your spouse. That they can see joy of God and understand what real good family life means. Oh, may you be blessed in the name of Jesus. Point number five. It is the will of God that you give thanks. Give God thanks in all things. Pursuing the will of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 In everything give thanks for this is the will, the will of God. What many of us does in everything is complaining. Sometimes we call God to question as if he's uh, our father's age mate. We ask God questions. I wish we know that you don't have the mouth to question God. In everything, give thanks. Because there is nothing that will happen in your life without God's knowledge and they are designed for a purpose. So when you apply your heart to knowledge, you discover the purpose of God in all things. Actually, many of us miss the blessings in the things that happen around us. Opportunities to be built, opportunities to be strengthened opportunities to show forth the nature of Jesus. We miss them. And people form impression that this is just another ordinary man. Why? Because we react to situations rather than responding with God's grace. Because we can't give thanks. I always tell the church I knew a man on the earth, not in the Bible and in the city where I dwell who once failed an exam, a medical exam for that matter. And somebody was asking him, how is the result? I said, yes, praise God, I failed. And in that profession, he became an outstanding global person for a glory to the name of God. You know, so that if you think it's difficult to praise God in difficult situations, there are people doing it. You are on your own. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Number six, which is the last one for today that you must serve God with gladness. Many of us are serving God religiously. Many of us are serving God because you are trapped in that church. You must serve God with gladness, with freedom. Not under, under, under trap. You must serve God with gladness. Psalm 100 verse 2 book of Psalms, 100 verses say, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. 
Serving God should be exciting, not by compulsion, not by stress. I've seen people serving God stressfully, like under bondage. Some are serving titles that they have given them. Oh, God give understanding to you. When they give you title, then you begin to sweat, doing things God didn't ask you to do by force because of the title you like. You don't get reward for that. That's why a working relationship with God is important for you to get the best out of every other thing you are going to do in life. You want to serve God, you don't have a working relationship, you'll be serving out of the right premise. When we serve driven by title, we miss God's purpose. We serve because He called us. We serve because we are grateful to Him that He redeems us. And we serve purposefully because we are inspired by His Spirit to do what we do. Serve God with gladness. May the Lord bless you. Shall we pray? Can you begin to thank the Lord who has brought this word your way? Pursuing God's will. I've not known any man who stays carefully in the will of God and beg for bread. I've been young, now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken? No, they are seed begging bread. A man is righteous when you take position with God on what pleases God on what God desires drop religious spirit the Bible said the letter kills the spirit give life come into the stream of the move of the Holy Spirit in the things you do and become real in spirit and in truth in your relationship can you say daddy thank you for the word that has come to me today the word I've taught you carry miracles because actually these are the things that are hindering supernatural move of God in your life hindering great experiences of his blessings and if you take care of them you begin to see how practically God manifests to the people that loves him oh we give you praise are you there and say Lord I give you praise for the truth that I've heard you are exalted Jehovah. Thank you for being there for me. Thank you for your word of life that has come again. I give you the glory. In Jesus most precious name we pray. Can you begin to ask God say I receive grace to nurture a working relationship with God. I receive grace to nurture a working relationship with God. A standing, walking, covenant relationship that will affect everything that I do in life. Are you praying? You are receiving grace. What I've taught you is not simple. It takes God's grace to work with God. To live for Him. To be what He has redeemed you to be. Say, I receive grace to nurture a walking relationship with you, Lord. Give me grace. Give me the strength that I need. Number two, can you begin to ask God that you may have the vision to be like him. Give me the vision, the desire. Let me begin to pant after you. After becoming like you. Give me strong internal desire to want to be like you in all things. To want to manifest your power. Manifest your nature manifest your beauty to people be a true reflection of your glory now anything you don't strongly desire you can be say give me that strong pounding heart to be like you to be a true reflection of you help me lord i receive grace to love the lord with all of my life to deepen my knowledge of him i receive that grace to deepen to enjoy studying the scripture to enjoy living on the principle of the word of God. Now when you begin to enjoy living on the principle of the word of God, real life in God begins. Many of us don't make our relationship practical. 
We just hear the word of God. We blow it off and we continue our tribalistic practical life. Our sectionalistic practical life. You know, and all that kind of thing. So the, the things we hear don't make the right impact on our steps. We don't make the necessary changes. So I receive grace for a transformed walk with God. In the name of Jesus. Can you say, I receive the strength of God to walk in faith, trusting the Lord absolutely for all things. Grace to trust the Lord, to depend on the Lord for all things in my life. In the name of Jesus, I may walk the walk of faith in everything in the life I live, seeing the Lord in the picture of my actions. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your great hand be on my life today to live a life free of guilt, free of hatred. Give me grace to forgive others as I walk and move with people daily and offense, things of offense come up. Give me a tender heart towards people around me. That I may forgive people that are around me. Deliver me from stronghold of, un of, of unforgiveness. I reject spirit of unforgiveness. I reject cunning spirit. I reject wicked spirit. I reject deceitful spirit. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus. I receive a tender heart in God. A heart full of grace and wisdom in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to cherish things that are holy, things that are true, things that are trustworthy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I receive enough strength of the Holy Spirit in my heart to give thanks in all things, to give God thanks for all things, to appreciate the Lord for every day of my life, to appreciate the Lord for everything he has blessed me with. To appreciate the Lord for challenges on my way. Which are designed to build me. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. And finally Lord I receive grace to serve you in, with gladness. Every struggle in service I drop today. I receive grace to serve you great hand of God to serve without struggle without competition in the name of Jesus thank you Father in Jesus most precious name we pray what do you think we want God to do for you can you just talk to the Lord it's an opportunity to talk to God now what are the things that you want the Lord to do the way is clear for you make it known to him you want healing the hand of the Lord is coming on your life to, to provoke healing now. Come and ask him. You want him to bless you in one area of your life or the other? Come and tell him. He's a God that blesses. He's the almighty, the great I am. Are there things that ought to have happened in your life but are yet to happen? Can you tell him, daddy, I'm overdue for this come to my aid give it to me make this way work for me he's the Lord there is none else thank you father we worship you we give you praise Lord in Jesus most precious name we pray I bless you in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit I decree today you shall be blessed. The great hand of God will be upon your life. I declare that your relationship be supernaturally fine-tuned and transformed in the name of Jesus. I receive rest for you in your journey in life in the name of Jesus. I ask for flow of revelation knowledge of God and deeper understanding of the things I've shared with you today. 
in the name of Jesus. I declare move of the Holy Ghost to inject this light into your life in the name of Jesus. And I declare whatever is not working in your life, they begin to work now in the name of Jesus. I receive the visitation of the Lord for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have asked today, I declare them granted to you in the name of Jesus. You are blessed in Jesus' name. This is well with you. Hallelujah. 